What is going on everyone? Welcome back to World According to Briggs and a video about wine, vino, adult grape juice, whatever you want to call it. Recently we did a video about alcohol consumption by state. While researching that, we learned people really like their wine. Not as much as beer in the United States, but they really get into their wine. Some of these people believe that wine is proof God cares about our happiness. Wine has been the go-to drink for suburban housewives since, I don't know, before the suburbs were a thing. Actually, the earliest traces of wine go back to Georgia, the country, not the state, in 6000 BC. Persia, they have proof of it there at 5000 BC, and Sicily about 4000 BC. Grapes are the highest value fruit crop in the US. In the United States, there's nearly 1 million acres of grape-bearing land. That means wine, grapes, raisins, whatever. Almost 8 million tons of grapes were produced in the U.S. in 2019. This list is going off 2019 numbers because 2020 pandemic, their numbers are off because of just lower production, everything else like that. You'd think there'd be higher since so many people are stuck at home. I was going to rank this list by the gallons produced, but I felt ranking it by how many wineries or vineyards each state has was more interesting. I also included the gallons produced and how much wine gave to the state's economy as well. All right, let's take a look. Number 10, North Carolina. Yeah, this one surprised me a little bit. I had no idea the Tar Heel State was big into wine, but apparently they are. They made it to the top 10. It's not a terribly large state. I mean, it's a medium-sized state. It ranks 28th in size out of 50 states, obviously. North Carolina has five different areas where they really get their wine on. So their wine country is the mountain, which is the Appalachian Mountains. The Piedmont area or region, that's the land that lays between the Atlantic Ocean and the Appalachian Mountains. It's also known as the Piedmont Triad. You got the Yadkin Valley, which I hope I pronounce that properly, the coast, and the Haw River Valley. There are 171 wineries in North Carolina. They produce 2,378,000 gallons a year, adding 3.7 billion to the economy. And that includes sales, production, employment, everything. But that's what it adds. Number nine, Michigan. This is another one. I never thought of Michigan as wine country, but here they are, number nine. Michigan has a few areas that I've never heard of, but apparently this is where they produce their best wine. You've got Fenville, Lake Michigan Shores, Leelanau Peninsula, Old Mission Peninsula, and Tip of the Mitt. Fenville and Lake Michigan Shores are on the southern end of the state, and everything else is up uh, at the top of the mitt, pretty much. Michigan has 191 wineries. They produce around 2.8 million gallons annually. I want to kind of be clear again, the number of how much they add to the economy, that figure includes businesses with wholesalers, retailers, restaurants, bars, and tourism spending. Number eight, Ohio. The Buckeye State is not known for its wine. It's actually really known for having a bunch of cities that really suck. But it is home to my favorite football team, the Cleveland Browns, and my favorite UFC fighter, Jessica I. As far as wine country goes in Ohio, they have wineries scattered throughout the state. But the highest concentration of wineries is going to be in Northeast Ohio. There are 254 wineries in Ohio, and they produce 1.5 million gallons a year, adding 3.8 billion to the state's economy. Number seven, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I've been to a couple wineries in Pennsylvania. They have some good wine. They've got it all over the place too, a lot like Ohio. When it comes to wine country in Pennsylvania, you got the Lake Erie wine country, which is right up against Ohio's wine country. You also have the Lehigh Valley wine country, which is down by Allentown. This area has been growing in recent years. They got pretty good grape industry going on down there. Pennsylvania has 285 wineries. They produce 2.1 million gallons a year, and this adds 4.2 billion to the state's economy. Number six, Virginia. I've heard about Virginia's wine country for many years. I've never been to drink wine in Virginia, but I've heard they have very good wine and a lot of it. When it comes to the wine country in Virginia, the central and northern Virginia counties that are east of the Blue Ridge Mountains, well, that's where you're going to find most of the wine, and it's pretty good. Thomas Jefferson even tried to make this a wine state. Virginia has 291 wineries. They produce 2.3 million gallons of wine every single year, and this adds about $5 billion to the state's economy. Number five, Texas. They do just about everything big in the Lone Star State, wine being one of them. They have a lot of vineyards. Most people that have never been to Texas just, you know, it's for some reason everyone thinks that the entire state is 
West Texas, you know, tumbleweeds and dirt. The entire state's totally different. You got down in the Houston area where it's pretty much swampy to Dallas, which it's, you know, the southern plains of the United States. Technically, it's a humid subtropical climate. My point is they have a lot of different climates and a lot of opportunity to grow some good grapes. And they do. Texas has 352 wineries. They produce 4.2 million gallons a year. This adds about 13.1 billion to the state's economy. Number four, New York. The Empire State is sort of known for their wine. They have a lot of it and they have a lot of tours. New York has several different wine country areas, I guess you could say. They have the Lake Erie one, which is connected to Pennsylvania's, which is connected to Ohio's. It's all in the same little area there. You got the Finger Lakes area, Upper Hudson, Hudson River region. Long Island has some wine country. And of course, the Champlain Valley of New York. New York has 403 wineries. They produce 28 0.5 million gallons every single year, or that's their average. And this adds about 13.8 billion to the state's economy. Number three, Washington State. Washington has a lot of wine, especially when you get down along the Columbia River and the eastern section. Actually, the center is pretty strong when it comes to wine, too. But Washington is known for their wine. Being in Oregon, I know all about it. I know a lot of people go wine tasting up there. They got a lot of wineries. Now, keep in mind, we just talked about New York and they had 403 wineries. Washington has 792 wineries. They produce 35.6 million gallons a year, but this only adds 9.6 billion to the state's economy. I guess it's not that expensive wine. I don't know the economics of it, but... There's other states with fewer wineries producing less wine, but adding more to the state's economy. Number two, Oregon. Right next door to Washington is the Beaver State, Oregon. So I watched this documentary in Oregon and the wine country here. And one of their theories or one of the stories they had that if it wasn't for a great flood called the Bonneville Flood, Oregon wouldn't have as good a wine. Apparently there's this big flood during the last ice age that just sent soil from Idaho all throughout Washington and Oregon. And a lot of that settled down in the Willamette Valley here in Oregon. And that's part of the reason we have such fertile soil here for the wine. I forget the whole story, but it was very interesting. When I say flood, this thing was massive. They said if it were to happen these days, you know, 21st century, it would kill tens of thousands. That's like build an ark like Noah type flood. Oregon has 793 wineries. They produce 10.9 million gallons a year, adding 6.5 billion to the state's economy. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. We are back at it. We're uploading there again. Why don't you head on over along with our new website? There's links down below. All right, on to number one. And number one, California. California is the number one producer of wine in the United States, and it beats most countries. Now, the reason I went with how many wineries they had because of the stat I'm going to give you in a minute and how many more wineries California has than any other state. They also produce far more wine than just about all the states combined. And when I say all the states combined, I'm not just talking about the states on this list. It's like almost all the states in the United States put them together. California still produces more wine. California is drowning in wine. I mean, they just have so much wine. They have so many different areas. I could tell you all the areas, but there's just far too many. I'll tell you a couple. There's Napa Valley, which is up in central northern California type area. It's like north of San Francisco and west of Sacramento. You have down near San Diego and Temecula and Fallbrook, plenty of wine down there. Monterey Bay has some good wine. Those are some of the bigger ones. There's a bunch more. Pick one and go there. Now let's get into the numbers. We started off this list with North Carolina that had 171 wineries and they produced about 2.3 million gallons a year. And our last one was Oregon with 793 wineries producing almost 11 million gallons a year. California has 4,501 wineries. They produce 684 million gallons of wine every single year. This adds 71.2 billion to the state's economy. Again, I know I'm gonna get some people questioning me about the numbers, what it adds to the economy. That comes from the National Association of American Wineries. So that's, and like I said before, that's what it adds when you figure taxes, you know, tourism, anything related to wine. 95% of US exported wine comes from California. Very interesting numbers. 
All right, everyone. That's today's video. Hope you liked the video. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.